So two-way tables used to describe the relationship between two categorical verbal. So we back to categorical categorical verbal now, right? Um, if you look at this table, <clears throat> you look at the very left column and the very right column. What do you see? You, you see the the sex column, right? Composed of women and men, and then and then the counts and the counts of each sex, right? How how many <clears throat> how many women who actually obtained the degree? How many men who actually obtained the degree? So for me, first thing first, when I look at the table, I'm going to calculate the distribution or the percentage of each of the sex, right? That just makes sense, right? I just want to know how many percent is women who actually obtained all those degrees and how many percent of the men um, who obtained all those degrees. So percentage of women will be equal to 2,283 divided by, divided by the total, which is 3,905. <clears throat> just equal to roughly 0.5846. And if you turn it into percentage, it will be 58.46%. And for the percent of men, either you can take one, subtract, you know, 0.5846, or you can do, or you can do 1622 divided by 3905. So this is roughly 41.54. So notice that there are, it's look like the portion of women who actually obtain the degree more than men in the first glance, right, in the first glance. Um, we call these, we call these percentage right here, percentage of men, I, mm. I just put the percentage without them. So percentage men. We call these distribution. We call these uh, percentage is the marginal. The marginal distribution. Why is marginal? Because it's on the right bottom um, of the page. Right. Hence margin marginal. So the marginal dis distribution, uh, here is the definition from the book that I copied it down. The marginal distribution of one of the categorical variables in a two-way table of counts is the distribution of values of that variable among all the individual described in the table or by the table. So marginal distribution, marginal distribution is pretty simple. Right? All you do is take percentage of each sex uh, if you have something else, say class one and class two, it's take percent of each class, right? So it's pretty simple, right? You need to take percentage or distribution of each of the individuals by the table. Usually when you, um, when we talk about the distribution of categorical variable, we use percentage instead of counts because it's more formal. And it gives you a better picture, right? If I say, if I say 2,000, 283 out of 3,905, is it better for you to imagine thing or is it better if I say 58%? 58% better, right? Um, it's just better in terms of in intuition when you use percentage. And we calculate the marginal distribution of women and men right there. Yeah, we just did it. So. Let's try this one. Video gaming and grace. Do you guys play video game? Who who play video game? Raise your hand. Really? No? 
Yeah, good for you. Good for you. Huh? Yeah, but it's still good. I um, I never play. I I I never have interest in playing it. I don't know why. I get I, when I was little, I did, but then um, as I grow older and older, I just yeah, just I don't, it's, I don't have a strong desire to play the game. <laughs> but I wish I I were. I wish I was. Um, I think people who play game and people who doesn't play game think differently in terms of your, you know how left brain and right brain? Yeah. Um, it's, it's fascinating me so how some people can think differently. Me, like black and white. That's right brain thinking right there. <laughs> Very logical. The left brain, they can, left brain, they can see more beyond just black and white. Right? So it's kind of cool, like artists, people. All right, so let's see. Um, the popularity of the computer, video game, online, and virtual reality games has raised concern that they might negatively affect youth. The data in this, in this exercise are based on recent survey um, 14 to 18 years old in Connecticut high schools. So here are the greatest distribution of boys who have and have not played video games. So on the first row, all the individual, all the high school students in Connecticut high school play video game, and that's their grace distribution. On the second row, um, are the boys students who never play video game. Let's, let's answer the following questions. How many people does this table describe? Well, all you have to do is add them all up, right? Add them all up, so. 736 plus 450 plus 193 plus 205 plus 144 plus 80. Let me give you a happy ending. Um, 1808. Students, boy students. How many of these have played video game? Well, the one who played video game is the first three right here, right? And you add them all up, you add them all up, they'll be equal to 1,379 people have played video game. Give the marginal distribution of grace. Now, um, they say give the marginal dis distribution of something. You're gonna follow the question, right? Um, when I say give marginal marginal distribution, I kind of describe to you what I want. In this in this case, I want the marginal distribution of grace, not of, of the ind individual who play or who not or, or who does not play game. Okay, so be careful what I'm asking for. Um, if I ask you, give the marginal distribution of the individual who play and uh, who play game and who does not play game, what you do, you will do what? You add up the first row, and then divide it by the total, right? And you add up the second row, divided by the total. But I'm not asking you that, right? I'm asking you the marginal distribution of grades. So you're gonna do vertically instead of horizontally. What you're gonna do first is you're gonna add up all the students who have A's and B's. You add up all the students who have C's and all the students who have D's and F's. So let me make a little table here for you. Um, mm -hmm. Oh no. So. All right, so here is Grace. That's great, and then it's gonna be in percentage. Um, 
I want to know how many percentage people actually have A's and B, and then C's, and then D's and F. How would I do that? I'm going to add up the, all the people who have A's and B's, right? So you add them up here, the go to number right there, 736 plus 205. And divided by, and divided by the total, which is 1808, which is we calculate right there. And then you get percentage. And then the next one you take 450 plus 144 divided by 1808. And then the next one, 193 plus 80 divided by 1808. Roughly 52%. I'm going to write down here. So I, I, I don't want to recopy it. So 52.05%. And then the next one will be, I think I have it here. So 32.85%. And then the last one will be 15.10%. So far, so good. So that's marginal distribution of grades. What percentage of boys represented in the table received the grades C or lower? Well, C or lower will be this row and this row, right? So C's row and the D's and F rows, and then you add them together, so you got the percentage of total. If you add them together, it'll be thirty-two point eighty-five plus fifteen point ten. That'll give you forty-nine point ninety-five, forty-seven. I'm sorry, forty-seven point ninety-five percent receive grade C's and lower. Wrong. Do you have any question up to this point? Yes. Forty seven, forty seven point nine five. No, the, the number actually says 32.85 plus 45. Oh, 32.85 plus 15.10. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, my number one is look like that. Sorry. Yeah, I don't write stick. I have a little thing. Eh? And my seven will have a little. How does that align? How is this tall? Do you think the marginal distribution tell you anything about the relationship between two variables, players versus non-players? If you look at that table right there, tell me any information about people who play game versus people who does not play game. Do I know percentage? Do I know? Do I know that the percentage of the people who play game that receive in A's and B's, or do I know that percentage of uh, people who does not play game receives A and B's, or even C or even D and Z? No, right? It's tell me nothing, right? Um, it does not tell me anything about individual who play games versus who does not play game related to the, the grades, right? In order to do that, we have to um, go into a different Distribution they call conditional distribution, right? In more detail oriented, 
as versus to marginal distribution. So conditional distribution, we're going to go back to the very first example that we did, the women and the men example, and then their um, counts of degrees they obtained. Let's say we want to compare the proportion of women and men who receive the professional doctorate degree. So let me go back to the table here for you. Here I have many different degrees here. I have associate, bachelor, master, and a doctorate. Right? I wanna know the percentage of the women and the percent of the men who receive the doctorate degree. Right? So it, it, I go more into details. So that's conditional. How do women and men differ in terms of degree they project receive in 2021, 2020 and 2021? Right, let's click on the data set. Um, so you need your laptop and pull up the, um, the slide that I post on Moodle. In the meantime, I'm gonna go to my Google Sheet. Google. Sixteen, chapter six, three. Uh, copy it. I don't. I don't think you'll be able to edit this on your. Um, just copy it and then make a new sheet. All right. So let's calculate the female sum count. Do you guys have it on? Uh, you go to file and then you. Yeah, can't. Mm, you can't click on it. Yeah, yeah, I won't be able to. I can't let you edit, otherwise I won't be able to edit. Everybody okay? So you can download it. All right. Um, I'm gonna count. I'm gonna count the number of female. So equal sum. Right, and then I'm gonna ask. They're gonna. They add. Uh, it's asking us for the range. So female will be here to here, there, and then male will be. Let me do it just to make sure they're right. So equal sum again. The range is from here to here. Maybe on this exam, I'll let you um, use your calculator. I mean, um, your laptop. Percentage. I want to know the percentage of, um, well, they're asking for the doctorate, but I'll, let's do all of them, right? Because it's, it's Google Sheet, it's pretty convenient. So equal, I want the conditional distribution, remember. <clears throat> I'm going to be, take the count of the female for a shoulder degree here. So click on that and divide it by, oops, and divide it by the female sum count. So just click on that and press enter. And then do the same all the way down to female here. Oh, something wrong. Something wrong. I think it doesn't like that. Cool. Click on that. I think you have to put in the number two three oh two. Um, 
No, I don't want that, but I want all, only up to female. So 99 here, let me stop. All right, better. It doesn't let me I could click on the cell. So far, so good. Um, I want to change it into percentage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this a lot by 100%, 100% or just by 100. And then I want to round to two decimal place. Go on here, round, one more, parenthesis, comma, two right there. Or maybe, uh, yeah, comma, two, let's enter. And then do the same for the rest. Right there. No, you don't have to do that, Dad. It just, uh, to me, it's a little bit nicer, that's all. And then you do the same thing for, for male. So here equal, click on that associate male column and then divide and you can just plug in the number. I don't like you to click on the cell, 1635. Yes, and you do the same thing for the rest. The part is not get um, recorded. Okay, so um, same thing, right? I want to round it. So um, multiply by hundred percent first. So put the parenthesis around those guys. And then times one hundred. Then come on two close parenthesis, and then over here you put round parenthesis. Again, you're not required to do that. You can just do it in your head. So that's how you do um, conditional, distribu um, conditional distribution on the Google Sheet. Or you can use a calculator. You just have to press the thing many times, that's all, right? So on your calculator, you take 6440 six, six, divided by the female sum. Then you do the same thing with the bachelor, same thing with the master, all the way here, all the way down to all of them. Now, remember in the beginning of the class, the marginal distribution of the women who actually obtain the degree is what? Roughly 59%, right? The men is 41. So it looks like the women obtain more degree than men. But if you look at individually, what do you see? Okay, for the associate degree, it seems like the women has more percentage for associate degree. But for the rest, look at the rest. As you go higher and higher education, there's more men, right? So it's kind of contradicted with the marginal distribution, isn't it? Here I see I see more percentage of a men obtaining each degree as versus to the at home. Right? And we'll talk about that later. We'll talk about, I think it's called Simpson Paradox. We'll call, we talk about that later. Um, but as you look at closer look, it, things different, right? Why, why is that? Why is that as you go to higher and higher, higher ed, it seems like more percentage in men than women. Is it because men are smarter than women? <laughs> I, I hope not the answer. <laughs> Otherwise, a lot of women would be pissed, <laughs> uh, including me. Um, well, um, it, it's, you got to account for the lurking variable, right? Uh, usually, female, when you get around 25, 27, you settle down, right? Start having family. Um, I did. <laughs> I did. When I was 24, uh, I, I go to college while I have kids. So it's hard, it's harder, it's harder for women to, uh, to go to a higher ed when you have your family to take care of. As men, they, they start the family much later, much later. But in general, I'm not saying all, but in general. So that might be one of the reasons, right? Uh, it could be other reasons too, I'm not sure, but uh, I'm pretty darn sure it's not because men is smarter than women. <laughs> And let's just keep it like that, All right? All right, um, the second one, I want you to do on your own. I'll walk around. So let me, um, should I leave it like that or should I change back to the slide? I'll change back to the slide a little bit. Let's stop sharing.
All right. So I want you to play around with the, um, the game data set, the one we just did earlier. And I want you to do the same thing like I did with the, uh, the degree data set. Oh, I had it there. Oh, sorry. Delete it. Delete it. You're supposed to be on your own. It's the same thing, right? The same thing we did earlier.
You can get the idea. Yes. Or you can use your calculator. <laughs> um, all right, so so the sum, the sum is gonna be equal. Sum, let's enter. I wanna count all the yes, let's enter. And then go down here, same thing, sum. Let's enter, count all the no. Over here, it's gonna be conditional distribution. Same thing we did with the women, the men, or the degree, they just said, right? So equal, click on one of the cell. I'll start with the first one. Divided by, for the sum, you're gonna plug it, you're gonna type it down. It doesn't like you to click on the cell. So 1379, enter. And then I'm gonna click on that first cell that I just found. When my cursor appeared to be a little plus, it had to have a little plus to drag it down to all the way to yes. Don't, not, don't drag it all the way down. Right. Now you have all the percentage of yes. Right. You wanna clean this up a little bit. You're gonna cover that fraction with parentheses because you're about to multiply with 100. Now I have too many decimal. I don't like that. I'm gonna round it. So go all the way to the beginning and say round. Just round, I don't have to round up or round down. And then put another parenthesis there. And then at the end, comma two mean two decimal places, comma one mean one decimal places. I want two. Right there, you click back there and then drag it down to the other two cell here. Okay. Then you do the same thing here, equal, maybe I'll do it fast. Well, ooh, it's doing it for me right here. Look, um, I'm gonna click here and then I'm gonna change my denominator. Because remember, it's yes. So denominator be 429. See? 429. <laughs> it's kind of remember for you. Just, you gotta understand your command so you can change things around. <clears throat> now, um, what can you tell me about this conditional distribution, gamer versus non-gamer? The percentage of who play a game obtaining A and B, C, D, and F, versus the percentage of who does not play a game obtain A and B, C, C, D, F. What do you think? Is it play game better than you look like it? Play games tend to have higher. Yeah, that's what they, they see, right? That's what they see. I see. Uh, that's, that's what I see in the data. So, um, um, so yeah. So your conclusion, you you would say this. Um, is people who play game tend to have better scores from the observed data set, right? Um, but again, this is could do, but this could be due by chance. We don't know for sure. Oh, I share my screen. Right, so let's draw down some conclusion. Um, okay, so I know that in the beginning they say that game, video game might um, affect youth in a bad way, right? Uh, but our data show the opposite way, right? show the opposite result. All right, what do you conclude? Okay, so um, from, um, so you say from the conditional distribution, it seems gamer, have better um, better score distribution than non gamer I, 
acaso yo concluí. On the exam, you can say things like that, that you've done. I'll give you 100%, right? But the next sentence is just something extra. Um, they bought this. Just... Maybe you, you, you are given another data set, maybe the result will be different. Right. So this one is what I will see. Oh, sorry. sorry. Okay, um, we're gonna stop here because we way ahead of schedule. Let me talk about um your uh, quiz three, go to chapter nine, and then we adjourn. Come on. <clears throat> you should be able to distinguish what is observational study versus the experiments. Uh, I'm not going to give you, I'm not going to ask you to tell me definition, but I'll give you examples. Okay? And then you tell me is this observational or experimental study. Okay? Kind of like, kind of like this example right here. Your quiz kind of like that example. I will ask you, um, is certain variable or are they explanatory or response? Right. I'll give you an example and ask you if it's an explanatory variable or response variable. Right. So you should be able to distinguish. What is the difference between explanatory and response variable? Remind me again. You use what variable to, to predict what variable? Yeah, right. it's, it's can't explain. <laughs> it, it explains the next variable. Right. Uh, be able to um, recognize explanatory variable versus response variable in the example. Know what well, know what are the subject? I'll, I'll ask like, what is the subject in this study? And I'll have option for you to choose. So you should be able to know which one. There will be a question on um, the designs. So I'll give you an example and I'll ask you, is this complete randomized design or randomized block design or mesh pairs? I 
And then the last, this let me eight question. Um, this is question number seven. I would suggest you take a look at this page, the very last slide. So read that here. So number eight. So number eight and number seven will be from your last slide. Okay. Everything on the exam, oh, I'm sorry, everything on the quiz, you should be able to see on, on my lecture notes. Not identically, but similar. All right. All right, that's it. If nothing else, have a good one. And I'll see you again on Wednesday. Bring your laptop with you or a uh, tablet.